Hi, my name is Emily Knox, and I'm an associate professor in the School of Information Sciences uh, here at Urbana-Champaign. Um, I'm here to respond to some of the follow-up questions I received um, about my talk on book banning. So the first question is, please explain the state, explain the state of Illinois' recent book ban or actually ban on book bans. Um, how will this impact local schools and school boards? So this law is actually what I would say much more of a policy law. So it's actually about um, schools and libraries who receive state funding must have a reconsideration policy that includes reference to the ALA Library Bill of Rights, Freedom to Read, and Freedom to View statements. So it's really about providing basically a carrot for public institutions to include a particular policy within their um, overall policy documents. So I just think it's important to realize that it doesn't actually keep any place from necessarily banning a book. It's just saying that in order to receive these state funds, you must have this policy um, on the books. Uh, do I expect additional states or entities to enact similar legislation? Yes, I do. Um, I think we will see this in more blue states. I do think it provides a good template um, for other uh, states to follow. Do I think it's the best uh, tool for addressing book bans or are there other avenues that should be explored um so i think it's one possible tool but there are many other tools so it's not that people should not be able to put in requests for reconsideration to materials it's really how is the process followed when that request goes and what sort of pressure do people have to say yes to a particular request, whether they agree with the request or not. Um, this is much more of a political issue than it is necessarily a policy issue. So I tell a lot of people that I think this is a good first step, the law in Illinois, but the best way to support your local libraries and schools is to give them more money overall. Uh, pay paper teachers more, pay librarians more, provide more resources. Um, that is actually what makes a difference uh, more than this particular law. How should books of the past with racist or other objectionable beliefs in today's ethos be addressed? So I think it depends on the book. Um, some of my favorite books are quite racist, so I'm a big fan of uh, Sherlock Holmes, which has incredibly racist um, portrayals in it, especially of Black people. Um, I also am a big fan of Agatha Christie, who has a lot of anti-Semitism um, in her books. Um, I think it really, really depends on the books. Sometimes, uh, those books should be removed. Sometimes they shouldn't be removed. It also depends on what kind of library you're talking about. So a public library is different from a school library, which is different from an academic library. The reasons for keeping or not keeping a book would be different in all of those different situations. Um, I would be quite upset if my library decided to remove Sherlock Holmes because they were upset about the racist depictions and some of the short stories. Um, I'm not, I, I guess there's not an easy answer to this question. People would like there to be easy answers. Well, we just remove all of those books. But I, I don't think that is quite as simple as people would like it to be. Um, it really depends on the mission of the institution and the actual book in question. How concerned should we be about books being removed in schools? Is the end game to rewrite history? Um, we should be extremely concerned because it's not actually about the books in so many of these situations. It's actually about the public institutions themselves. This is really about how do we understand history? Um, how do we portray the truth of our past? 
So I think the issue of like rewriting history is interesting because to me, this is really, if we look at the books that are about race, especially um, that are being targeted in school curriculums, these are books that are actually rewriting history. Um, they are trying to tell the truth about, uh, or a particular truth about what happened in our history, um, which is often quite difficult. A lot of us have grown up with a triumphal understanding of especially American history. And these books, I use the academic word, problematize that. Um, they make it so that it's not as easy to um, accept that triumphant history of our path, um, of, our, of our country. So, what I really see today is really a continuation of especially lost causism, um, the idea that um, there that the country is um, that what happened during the Civil War, for example, was only about states' rights. It wasn't really about people who were enslaved. Um, all of these questions can come back again and again if you look at um, our history overall. So I would say that we should be extremely concerned, that we should want our children to know all about our history, both the good and the bad, and that we should not allow people who only want one certain idea of our history to be told in our schools. In your opinion, are there any books that should be banned from schools? Um, this is also a difficult question. There are lots of books. Uh, the way I talk to my students about this is that they should be in the business of selecting and not censorship. So the way Lester Ashheim talks about this in his article in 1953 called Selection Not Censorship is that you look for reasons to keep a book and not reasons to keep a book out of your collection. So if you find yourself saying, this is a bad book, I disagree with this book, as opposed to saying, does this book match our collection development policy? Does it click, match with the mission of our institution? Um, it's not that all books should be in libraries or in schools, that's impossible. It's much more of thinking through what is important for kids to know, what is um, the mission of our school overall, how does this support the curriculum, um, how do we think um, uh, about uh, what is important for people who are educated. There are lots of different questions that are involved in that. I think the other place where this gets really difficult is if you're thinking about the ages of children in particular schools. So if you have a, you know, an elementary school, you have kids who are between the ages of five and 10, that is a huge development um, gap between those two children, those two groups of children. And so the books that those kids needs can, need can be very different. You can even see this especially in middle school where you have kids who are between the ages of what, nine and 14. Um, you have kids who have not even started puberty and kids who are through puberty. Um, thinking about what the reading and educational needs are for those kids can be quite difficult. Um, so no, I would say that I don't necessarily think that there are books that should be banned from schools because that's not really how I think about it. I think about what are the best books for kids in a particular school. If a school wants to reconsider a previously banned book, how should the reconsideration, how should the reconsideration process be addressed? So um, the best way to do that is that you actually have a couple ways of doing it. So if a book has been banned, um, you want to make sure that it was done through the proper process. If it was not done through the proper process, then it should be returned to the shelves. Um, if it's a book that was banned many years ago, you should reconsider it um also through a process so it should go through a process of having committee members looking at it 
Um, the public can also have comment on it. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is that that's really a process um, question. So the process is one where you would go through the process in the other direction. You would say, should we introduce this book back? That's not quite how it works though. A lot of times books are just, um, are often just returned to the shelves because it often rem it matters why a book was removed in the first place. So hopefully you have records looking at why this particular person wanted to remove, for example, are you there, God, it's me, Margaret, from the bookshelves, right? Um, does Do their reasons make sense right now? Uh, is there, um, have there been changes in the collection development policy since then that allow this book to be reintroduced? Um, so once again, I hope that I'm showing that like these are actually quite nuanced questions. Um, you really have to look at the level of analysis. You have to think about like what makes sense for this particular community, for this particular in institution. There aren't a lot of blanket answers to these questions. Um, my hope is that <clears throat> people just really think a lot about um, what are you trying to accomplish when you ask for a book to be removed? Um, will it actually get to the outcome that you're looking for? Um, also, I'm really encouraging people to read these banned books for themselves. Um, see how you feel about them. Um, talk to your kids about the books that they're reading. Um, and also support your local public schools and public libraries. Uh, it makes a big difference when people come out to support the workers who are there. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you can contact me at knox at illinois.edu. I'm happy to uh, discuss banned books and libraries and schools at any time. Thanks.